Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Here we are. It's the beginning of October. And as my regular viewers will know, I often have lately been talking about what will happen after Labor Day, which is traditionally the time when uh, U.S. home builders have stocked up on whatever wood they think they might need for uh, remaining construction to the end of the year. And so lumber sales and lumber prices do tend to drop or slow down. And so we did have that a little bit in September. There was a pop in the benchmark Western Spruce Pine for KD 2x4, number two and better, but mostly because sales were uh, so muted that that price dropped actually below what the market could bear. And so did correct up slightly uh, in the end of August and uh, into the beginning of September and is now flattening out. And at levels the same as last year. So people who are looking to understand where are we in the market now in the past couple of years uh the changes to society and all of the disruptions both from covid and the atmospheric river which uh, caused major devastation to highways and uh, rail line in british columbia we are now past that that volatility of those huge increases of lumber prices is behind us and people are asking now looking at these last two years how can we assess where is the market going forward into next year and maybe even further into the future? So right now, I'm going to show you the graph and table of the top six, the benchmark uh, construction framing softwood lumber items that we put on the website and that we show on YouTube. This is, of course, a very small portion of the full 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we do track every week, which my customers who have a login to the dashboard are able to see overnight on Thursday and Friday mornings when they log in as the new weekly prices are updated. So let's look at those graphs in the table right now, and then I'll come back and drill down further into detail Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce, Southern Pine, and a little bit about panel. So these graphs are generated by my dashboard, which my customers can see. And I draw your attention to the scale of the axis on the left side, which is uh, US dollars per thousand board feet. And the top price now is $600. Since this uh, graph is a two year rolling price history of monthly averages, it runs from October 2022 to the present. And those, uh, the great volatility of high prices has been worked out now. And it's a little bit easier to see the trend line of the changes. And so the uh, pink line or red line running in, in the middle, Western Spruce Pine Fir, uh, was up and down not too much volatility from a high of 500 dollars to a low which was in spring last year of about 350 and ranging in between there which is a bit more normal historically about 150 dollars per thousand board feet throughout the year then you have the yellow line southern pine you can see that that did crest up a bit higher than the others again in spring last year but corrected down lower in uh, early summer of this year. And then the third item, two by four that we talk about all the time, Eastern Spruce, the blue line uh, higher up. This is due to a couple of um, cost variables in the east that uh, does not happen in the west or the south as uh, first of all, timber harvest and also energy costs are higher in the east than they are in the west and in the south. So those prices do also fluctuate by about $150 throughout the year, but at a higher range. This is the exact same data presented as a table. And all of this is updated every week when we upload a new Excel file with the new prices. So on the top line is the Western Spruce down a little bit this week and down slightly on the month. The second line, Southern Yellow Pine on the east side, it popped up this week. 
And that's due to, first of all, the now thankfully resolved dock workers job action, but also due to destruction of transportation in that area, making it difficult not only for people to get to work, there might even be power failure, but also difficult for the lumber trucks to get out. Uh, and it is uh, still with the Southern Pine up a little bit over the month. Eastern Spruce did sell more volumes this week, but the price remained the same and is almost flat on the month. And then your studs, you can't build a house without studs. This is up slightly on the week and up a little bit on the, on the month. Green Douglas fir, this is a specialty item. Douglas fir only grows on the coast. It is uh, very uh, loyal architects and builders on the U.S. Eastern Seaboard and is also used for custom home building and high-end home building in places like Florida and Texas. Dropped this week, which is not unusual because, again, following Labor Day, usually home building and uh, activity is dropping and so prices fall as sales drop off and again still with that Douglas fir it's down on the month. Plywood, Canadian softwood plywood out of Toronto 9.5 millimeters or 3 8 inch flat on the week, flat on the month. <laughs> That's completely normal for the time of year. Okay so now there is a difference in the price movement in the east and in the west. Usually, the western spruce and the western species lead the market, as this is the preferred item that home builders would rather have if they can in their construction projects, and also because it is produced, if not at the highest volume, very close to the highest volume. And so, two things. I'm doing another video right after this about the storms, Hurricane Helene, and the destruction, what happened there, and what is that going to mean for the lumber market. I'm going to use previous major storms like Hurricane Andrew from 1992 and Katrina from 2005. What did that reconstruction, how much money, what was the volume of lumber, and what happened to the price of lumber. So stay tuned. There's going to be another video about that specifically right now. Otherwise, the big thing that happened in the East was the dock workers job action, which thankfully has been resolved. So it did cause an issue for both the, definitely Southern Yellow Pine and also Eastern Spruce, so the Eastern species, because inventories have been so lean. When we were in normal market, it hasn't there hasn't been a normal that we would consider historically for like eight years. But previously, the customer, the reload, and the wholesalers stock up on wood. And they have wood to sell that they bought previously at a higher or lower price, depending on what the market is doing. And then they are purchasing from the mills at whatever the price is now, which is what we do, print, it's cash, FOB mill sawmill price for whatever region, east, west, or south, okay, which also customers can either hedge or buy on futures. So on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, there is a futures board for lumber. It's very narrowly traded, uh, very, very small volumes, makes it uh, easy to manipulate and is not necessarily always a good measurement of what is happening in cash looking back in hindsight again historically, gives a picture. So when you put all of these things together, the past, what happened with macro macroeconomic conditions and with lumber prices, housing construction, and then these um, major events like the storms, uh, you can see what happened with the lumber prices in the past and try to think about what might happen in the future. So currently, we are at the time of year when normally things would slow down and normally people would not necessarily be stocking inventory. So when we had the dock worker job action and uh, no transportation, no movement of materials at the ports on the U.S. East, immediately caused a shock to the lumber industry precisely because nobody had 
extra wood. And if they needed something for a project that they had ongoing, they had possibly miscalculated or something changed and they needed some more wood, everybody had to order from the mill. This causes an issue. So the southern yellow pine on the east side prices did go up this past week. And the eastern spruce, demand increased, but the price stayed the same. Okay, and then western spruce, as I said, those prices are uh, actually slightly down. They did uh, recover up in the past couple of weeks, but are now back down. So those two species, the western spruce and the eastern spruce, are very, very even with what they were at this time last year. The southern pine on the east side had, uh, let's say, ballooned up a bit in the end of the summer last year and was on its way correcting down. But uh, the price where it is right now is rising and it looks like in a couple of weeks those two lines are going to meet. So this is a very good stability. This gives a very good indication that supply demand is at least not completely out of whack. It might not be the best situation. As people know, there have been a lot of downtime and curtailment announcements for more than one year. I did a video just recently on how much volume has been reduced across North America due to this slow demand and uh, in an effort for the mills to prevent the price from, from dropping even further, uh, it was approximately 6% less manufacturing of lumber for the first uh, half, a little bit more than half of this year compared to last year. And last year was also slow. Okay, so while we have a situation where there's still a lot of unknowns and people are still trying to figure out where is the market at and uh, what does that mean for prices? We at least have some level of evenness in the last one year, maybe one and a half years to look at and see what do we think is gonna happen coming up in the future. So let's look at those other graphs, the specific items, and I'll get into a little bit more detail there. So again, do note the scale on the left-hand axis the top price right now is $500 US per thousand board feet. People will remember that in uh, middle, early 2020 and late 2021, that number was 1600 and 1200. So uh, when you look at the volatility of the price going up and down, that is a little bit more normal compared to the past. So what we have here on the Western Spruce Pine Fir KD two by four, number two and better, is a US $388 per thousand board feet this week, down $6 or 2% from last week when it was 394, down $16 or 4% from one month ago when it was 404, down $12 or 3% from the same week last year when it was 400, and two years ago, which is the red line, this price was 445. Southern Yellow Pine, KD 2x4 on the east side this week is uh, up. So that's $432, which is up $22 or 5% from last week when it was $410. Up $32 or 8% from one month ago when it was $400. And is down $73 or 14% from the same week last year when it was $505. So that's the yellow line, and this is what I was talking about. It seems like just there in September last year, maybe that price got pushed up a little bit higher than the market could bear. And the customer's uh, counter offer brought that back down. And then again, the red line was two years ago, same week then, that price was $535. Okay, and then here we have Eastern Spruce Pine Fir. This comes out of Quebec and New York State. And I'm showing you here uh, exactly same price this week as the same week last year, okay? Which is $500 US per thousand board feet. Uh, one month ago, it was 501. Uh, and then two years ago, that's the pink line, it was 565. Now what happened here this past week when the dock worker strike uh, affected transportation, there was an increase in sales of Eastern Spruce. 
in the same way that there was an e increase in sales in Southern Pine. However, the price did not move, okay? And so that's why we watch every week because there is a relationship between these three items. However, they don't always move the same, change by the same amount, or even go up and down as each other. Okay, so interesting, right? It tells you a lot. Now, just real quick, here's another image. We do a, a monthly newsletter called Madison Sawmill Curtailment Lookout, which does track by facility what is uh, manufacturing changes. So if a new mill is coming online, which also has happened, uh, maybe if there's a fire or some other issue at a mill that takes it out of production for a little while, and definitely these curtailment, downtime, closure announcements, have a look here. This goes out to customers uh, at the end of every month, showing you for that month, and it also includes uh, news item uh, announcements. And this is uh, very worthwhile because it is on time. A lot of other uh, providers of information like what we do here at Madison's, there's a huge lag. And, and they're not quite as thorough <laughs> as Madison's because we really are speaking to the industry every week and they know us and will uh, let us know and will uh, inform when we ask what is happening, we get the true information. And as much of the actual volume that is being reduced or increased as, we, uh, as they tell us, the private, uh, privately owned companies don't have to report. And so that's a little bit not as easy to get, but otherwise it's a very comprehensive look at the end of every month at that month. So this is the September issue, the main page, the front page, and you can see the listing of each facility that was uh, impacted. Uh, if you look along the top there, it tells you the actual volume that came off and when is the expected uh, return back to normal. Okay, and so I'll leave that there for now. Like I said, I've got a video coming up immediately about the storms and what that means, uh, and I'm going to use, because we don't know uh, what the actual uh, destru destruction of homes or private property is at this moment. There's still, the emergency services are still out. There's a lot of uh, need right now for recovery, but I'm using uh, previous major issues to demonstrate what that did with uh, aid, and with the reconstruction, rebuilding, and lumber prices and changes to the volume. So if you like what you see here, click like, so this video will get recommended to other viewers. Subscribe, so you'll be notified when we make another video. And if you need more, the link in the caption here goes to the website. You can fill out a form, you can request a sample. We will send you the list of the 500 individual commodity softwood lumber and panel prices that we track and what the price is for that week. And we will also send you the commentary explaining why those prices changed. And this is all, like I said, in my dashboard that customers log into every week. And so don't miss out. Your competitors, your colleagues are already looking at it. The videos are great because it's a bit of a summary, but the actual data, there's much, much more to it than what I say here. Lock in your rate now. By signing up today, you'll save 15% on your subscription for a whole year. Don't miss out.